selling, salvaging, and disenchanting, getting aspects, all sorts of things that we can do in Diablo 4. But the real question is, which one do you do when you're leveling? When do you do it? How do you do it? All that fun action. So we're going to answer that in today's video. But if this is your first time on my channel, the way I like to do things is by upfronting the knowledge in my video. So you can really decide if you want to stick around to hear a further explanation or just head on out. So just the short and narrow of it, just the, 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 the quick too long didn't watch. If you have a blue or a white item, I just go ahead and sell that and anything rare or yellow or higher, I go ahead and salvage that at the Smith. If there's a specific aspect, that's a little bit longer of a conversation. We'll have that in the respective location, but that's really the, the short and narrow of this entire video. You can stick around and find out the further explanation for this because there are some situations that you're going to want to do different exceptions to this rule, but that's all you need to know. You can go ahead and jump back into the game, have fun at launch, whatever you're looking and waiting to do. This hopefully gets you back and playing Diablo 4 as fast as possible. Uh, but before you do head out, if you are indeed heading out, please don't forget to shoot me a like, a comment, and or subscribe. Any one of those things does help me out a huge ton. And I do stream quite a bit on Twitch with Diablo 4 and a number of other games. You can find that link in the comments section below and all that fun action. But let's get started here on when to sell and when to salvage in Diablo 4. Okay, so loading into the game, I'm on my necromancer here. I've shut off all of my pets so that it doesn't spoil what it looks like if you wanted to kind of retain that for yourself because it is a very fun experience to do for the first time. But we're going to jump on over here to a weapon smith, any, or I'm sorry, a weapon vendor, and I'm going to take a look at what I've got in my inventory. So right now, I just have nothing but rares and a single legendary in my inventory. So I'm not going to sell all this. And that's really... The important thing to see here is that if you need gold, that's the best way to probably get it reliably. You want to mark that as junk first, sell that as junk first, and then move on to your salvaging um, into the salvage menu. And salvaging probably is better off done um, from a manual standpoint, and I'll show you what I mean by that. But actually, we got one little item right here. That's going to get us 1,800 gold. There we go. We've sold it. Now, the important thing here I want to I want to stress on is that gold is actually quite easy to come by ambiently throughout the game in the leveling process. That's only going to get substantially more as you get into the end game, as you jump into nightmare and higher world difficulties. You just get more gold. So you shouldn't be really hurting for gold too much. And if you are, this will help you kind of like shore that up. But now the reason we're going to be focusing on rares for our salvaging is that this is going to give us some materials, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click this. We're going to just directly break these down. So this gave us white materials, common materials. This gave us all three, gave us both white and it gave us magic and it gave us rare. So this is why I focus on rare materials to break down over the other two first, because this guarantees me that I'm going to get at most rare and I'll get the other things in between. So I'm maximizing the amount of gold I can get by selling the, the former two uh, qualities and then maximizing the amount of rare plus other things I can get by just going ahead and selling all my, or uh, uh, breaking down my rares. If you're really hurting for money, you can swap this formula if you so wish. But you also have, of course, legendaries. Now, <clears throat> this brings us into a conversation about aspects, which I'm gonna get into in just a little bit here. But I personally, prefer breaking down or salvaging the legendaries more than disenchanting them. And again, I'm going to talk about that in a second here. Why I do this is because I want the essence from this legendary. And to be totally honest, if I'm playing like the, the fashion game, Diablo fashion game, I, I, I want that transmog. I want that new look. So I would probably go ahead and break this down. I'm going to hold on to it for the next portion of the video, but this is really how I approach salvaging and selling things in the game. And one really quick little thing you can do here to help you out when you are playing through the game is go ahead and go into options, go ahead and go up top here to accessibility, and then scroll all the way to the bottom. And you're going to find these two things, in-game loot sounds and play audio on ambient loot. So I don't think I can do this in town. We're going to find out right now. With this highlighted, you're going to turn all these things on. So now whenever something drops of a minimum quality of rare or higher, <clears throat> so legendary or unique, it's going to make a noise for me. Anything that drops magic or common, I don't hear it. It just, it's on the ground. I can press alt. I can see it's there. I can go snag it if I so wish, but this kind of keeps it down on like a visual clutter for me. So I can, I can pinpoint where items drop. And same thing here. This is going to play an audio ambient loot thing when I do pick up a legendary now. So now I know, oh, you know what? <clears throat> Not only did I hear that legendary drop, I now heard the additional uh, audio cue of picking it up. 
So those are just some quick little things I wanted to show. It's not necessarily related to the topic of the video, but it's going to help you nonetheless in kind of keeping the mental clutter down of all of your item, organiza or <laughs> item organization. So let's jump now into a conversation about your aspects and disenchanting and ripping them off of items. So our next conversation is about both extracting and imprinting our aspect. Now you're going to do that at the occultist up here and that unlocks around level 10, I believe. You're not going to have that right out the gate, but don't worry about it. You probably won't use it out the gate. So let's go ahead and click on Demia here, and, or Demion, and we're going to see that we have the ability to add things to an item. Now you can only imprint items that are, uh, what's it called, rare or legendary, from I believe what it tells you when you're going through this process. And you have two ways you can imprint something. You can imprint it from your Codex of Power. These are going to be anything that you've pulled out from an actual dungeon. So let's just click this button. And it's going to then make a legendary out of that item, right? I'm imprinting this onto this item to then make this item. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press imprint. Now, it's important to see here that this is going to also cost me Veiled Crystals. This is the rare I was talking about. Um, this is a rare resource that you're going to get from salvaging, so it's nice to have them. But the other thing is to get them from your inventory. Now, I don't have any existing aspects, but what I would do here is you click extract aspect and you'd go ahead and let's just pull this thing into the slot. Now, it's going to take this aspect that says your maximum number of skeleton mages is increased by two and rip it off. Your maximum number of skeleton mages is increased by two. It's important to note, too, that it power is increased in amulets and it's also going to be increased in two handed weapons by 100 percent. Uh, some things will have a variance, and this is why this is important. So when you're going to be extracting things, it's going to really come down to the item that you got. So take a look here at Vigo's Protecting Amulet. When hit with a not when, when hit while not healthy, a magical bubble is summoned around you for 6.8, which is part of a variance. Now that is from the advanced tooltip um, turn on, which is in the options in gameplay. I have a whole tips video that's in the upper right hand corner that explains a bunch of these things, but. This is actually the top end of that spectrum. That's actually a pretty good interval, right? So you'd probably want to rip off a good aspect of something like this. These gloves are another really good example here, but I've already imprinted them. So here's what you really need to know. So these gloves are crucial for my build because I'm using Bloodlands. So I ripped these off because I'm going to, I want to keep using them as long as I can. The thing is, once you rip an, an aspect off, it comes off directly how it is. So if I rip this one off, it's telling me that I'm getting, it's going from 6.8 now down to 4.5 because it's coming off of an amulet, which was giving it a buff. So those are some things you have to take a look at before you rip off an aspect. If it's getting a buff of an amulet, okay, well now I, I gotta know that I'm actually gonna get less of a value because it's being buffed because of the presence of whatever it was on. And when I press this button, extract aspect, which I will not do because I love that amulet at this current point in the game, it comes into this pool of aspects here in your inventory. And then you take that aspect and you imprint it just as you would from something from the Codex of Power. And then it goes right here like you would see with these bone weave gauntlets of hungry blood imprinted when blood lance blah, 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 blah. Versus this that just has that has a little uh, well aster star asterisk whatever and then the description. So the important thing again for aspects here and when you're going to do it is did you get a high roll on it? Is it on something that's superficially bloating that roll right? So like an amulet in this example. Do I need it for a build? And am I comfortable only ripping it off once and imprinting it once? You don't you can't just rip it off infinitely. It's only a once or done once and done. So. I actually personally almost never uh, extract aspects unless I absolutely need that aspect for a build and I'm trying to just push it onto another item. I mean, for me leveling now at this point, this gives me two ranks to my primary damage attribute and it gives me the, the, uh, the aspect that I need for my build. I'm not going to touch this. The only way I'm going to touch this is if I get a better glove that has the exact same aspect. So there's no reason for me to really want to remove this if I'm going through the leveling process. In the end game, a lot of this information might change, but then you're not there yet. You're trying to level up. You're trying to get to max. So in the meantime, find the aspects you want and need and just keep them and hold on to them as long as you can. The biggest thing that matters in this game is your weapon because you want to be able to kill things to push your level up. So hopefully this gives you a really good idea of 
how to imprint and extract your aspects, when to do that, how to sell things, when to sell things, when you should be salvaging things. And just as a quick recap here, you're going to sell your common slash white items, your blue items, and then salvage any of your rare or yellow items. And I'd probably even salvage most legendary items unless I absolutely needed an aspect, in which case I would extract it and imprint it onto an up a better weapon that probably gives me rank bonuses to a specific skill that I'm using as part of my build. So hopefully this helped you out a whole ton. Uh, if, if you have any other questions about it, or maybe there's a specific use case that you're running into that this video didn't help you out with, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I am more than happy, happy to help you out. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.